Some problems with masses connected by strings are a little bit more complicated if the string is routed over a pulley. The pulley isn't too challenging, except it requires an interesting adaptation uh, because the string changes direction as the string goes up, over a pulley, and back down again. In this case, we'll have a somewhat uh, interesting situation where we have to adapt our notion of a coordinate system. I'm going to work a problem now where we have two masses, which I'll label M1 and M2, which are tied together by a light string, and the string is over suspended over this pulley right here. We're going to also say that the pulley is very light compared to the masses, so that it doesn't really enter the problem in any significant way. If these two masses are unequal, you can easily imagine that gravity starts pulling down uh, more preferentially on one than the other, and we can solve for what is the acceleration of the system, the two masses, and what is this tension in the string. There must be some tension, or else if I simply cut the string, the masses would fall and free fall. As I said, we're going to have to always start with coordinate systems. So I'm going to work with a coordinate system in which x follows the direction of the string. y is perpendicular to this. This has an interesting implication because for the left-hand mass, let's say that x points upward because maybe ma mass number m1 is going to be moving upward in this picture. But for mass m2, the coordinate system has x pointing downward. That's because if mass m1 goes up, and if the string doesn't stretch or compress in any way, when m1 goes up, m2 goes down. So a positive displacement of one foot in m for x, for the case of m1, means that m2 moves down by one foot. So if we want both displacements, or uh, x values, to be positive in this case, then we must flip the coordinate system. It goes up for the left-hand mass, brought down for the right-hand mass. There's nothing special about the designation of which one goes up and which goes down. One must simply be consistent. Our first step is going to be to draw a free-by diagram for each of the two objects in the system. I'm going to begin with the left-hand mass, M1. If there were no string attached to it whatsoever, it would simply fall, and it would do so because there's a force M1G pointing downward. However, it is connected to a string, and that string has a tension in it, so I'm going to write an arrow pointing in the upward direction, which has a, a force T from the, for the tension of the string. In the case of the second mass, there's a force M2G pointing straight down, and again, the tension of the string points up, because if I were to cut that string, the object would be in free fall, so T acts to pull the, the mass in the upward direction. Now we need to just assign a direction for the motion. We already did that with our coordinate system, and if x points up, then the acceleration points up. If x points down, then the acceleration points down. Those, those, those arrows for A define what is a positive acceleration for each of these two objects. Our next step is to write down Newton's laws. So we need to write down the, sum of the, the net force equals ma for each object. For the left-hand object, m1a would be the result, but we have to write down the net force, so that's the sum of all forces acting on m1 in the x-direction. For m1, in the positive x-direction I have t, and in the negative x-direction I have m1g. Notice that m1g points down, and for the left-hand object, that's in the negative x-direction. So that's Newton's second law for m1. For m2, gravity points in the positive x-direction because m2g points down and the x-direction points down. And t, the tension of the string, points in the upward direction, which is negative x. So this expression is Newton's second law for the second mass. It says the sum of the forces equals m2 times a. I have two equations here. I have two unknowns. I don't know the value for the acceleration. I also don't know the value for the tension, t. So this reverts back to typical algebra where I need to solve two equations and two unknowns. If I add these two expressions together, in other words, just take the left-hand side of this expression and this left-hand side of this expression and add them, the t's will cancel because it's positive here and negative there. I'm left with m2g minus m1g on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I simply have m1a plus m2a. So that's just coming from adding two equations together.
Now I have an expression where everything is known except for the value for a. If I factor and get a pulled out from m1 and m2, I have a solution a equals m2g, or excuse me, m2 minus m1 over m2 plus m1 times g. Notice that the acceleration a has the correct units because it has the same units as g times this thing in the brackets here, which is dimensionless. The thing in the brackets has mass in the numerator divided by mass in the denominator. So that is uh, dimensionless, and I have a is, has the same units as g, which we know is an acceleration. Now, once I have this value for the acceleration, I can plug it in back here into this expression, and I will have an expression for t, the tension of the string. If I do that, it reduces to t is twice m1 m2 over m2 plus m1 times g. This has the correct units as well because one of these factors of mass in the numerator will cancel with the f mass in the denominator and I'll have a mass times g is the tension which is like the correct units for tension. It's a little hard to know if these expressions are right, we did a lot of algebra to get to these expressions, and it's always useful to check our answers. So we will go through some limiting cases. Let's suppose, for example, that we have the two masses are equal. This means I have a one kilogram mass on the left and a one kilogram mass on the right. It looks a lot like a scale. I can imagine in this case that it just hangs there and doesn't move. If I go through these expressions, uh, in our box, um, when m2 is equal to m1, I notice that the acceleration a is equal to zero. And when m2 is equal to m1, I notice that the value for t is just m1g or m2g, whichever you like, because they have the same value. And that makes a lot of sense. Another possibility is where I set one of the masses to zero. In other words, um, if I set m1 to zero, that means that m2 is just really, really heavy compared to m1, and I can ignore m1. If I do that, then I look in this box expression for a, if I set m1 to 0, it disappears from the numerator and disappears from the denominator, and I have just m2 over m2, I get a equals g. I also see that if m1 is 0, the tension is 0. Is that reasonable? Well, if m1 is 0, if I go back to my picture up at the top here, if m1 is 0, then m2 is not being pulled back by anything because there's no gravitational pull down in M1, M2 is free to fall. And it's not surprising that A equals G. A equals G just corresponds to free fall. And notice it's positive G, not negative G, which means that the, the, the whole system is going to fall over to the side where M2 is. I could do the opposite. I could set M2 to 0. That means that M1 is just sitting there by itself hanging off this pulley and nothing pulling back on it. And then if I go back to my expression for a, when m2 is 0, I set it to 0 here and I set it to 0 there, I have minus m1 over m1, and a equals minus g. Again, tension will equal 0 when I set m2 to 0. What does it mean that a equals minus g? Well, it means that a, instead of being a positive pointing up like this, actually points in the backward direction for m1. Backward means in the negative x direction, which means down. And it just means that m1 will go into free fall, which again makes a lot of sense. So we went through in this problem all the steps of drawing free by diagrams, creating a coordinate system that works for this string, which has to you know, bend around the pulley. So we had a bent coordinate system in a way. And then we wrote uh, Newton's Laws types expressions for the two masses in both the x and y direction. We didn't bother with y because there are no forces in the y direction. And we were able to solve for a final answer for all the unknowns in the problem in this case, the acceleration and the tension in the string.